York uh, University's QP Local 3903 reduced its contract demands to just four items. The local had accepted York's salary proposal and most of the major benefits articles had been agreed to. The local was prepared to negotiate on the two remaining issues. With a negotiated settlement so close, why is the McGuinty government resorting to back-to-work legislation? The Premier sent in our top mediator, Reg Pearson, to see if he could help the parties. Good man. Even he could not break this impasse. Shameful. Throughout all of this, more than 45,000 students have been unable to continue their learning. For oh, these students, the their academic year is in jeopardy. And he's nobody's fool, make no mistake about that. But Mr. Pearson reported back that he was left with a very clear impression <clears throat> that York management wasn't really interested in negotiating a resolution, that they were simply waiting for back-to-work legislation. We are as anxious as the members across the way to see 50,000-plus students back in the classroom, and we call on all members, particularly those in the new Democratic Party, to stop blocking access of those students to post-secondary education. Here, here. But the government's own head mediator, Reg Pearson, made it clear last week that the York administration had no intention of bargaining and was, were just waiting for legislation. And I want to quote him, quote, everything that I've seen has been not quite there. And quite frankly, there, meaning York University administration, they're not prepared to move up out of their ballpark. That could be because they're waiting for the government to fix the problem. We will do everything we can to make sure that we get young people back in the classroom at the earliest possible opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New question. The legislature was uh, recalled to strip away the collective bargaining rights of York workers it should have been recalled to deal with job crisis and job losses in our province. Over the past five weeks, 60 jobs at Tembeck and Spruce Falls, 200 Ube Automotive, Sarnia, 40 jobs at Can West, 61 at Lakeside Steel. The list goes on and on. When will we finally see a plan? Of economic development. The plan, Speaker, is for the government to jump in, uh, to jumpstart businesses, to allow them to jump ahead of their global competitors. And this government has done that uh, over the past three weeks. Deputy Premier, we are prepared to sit here until midnight to get this bill passed. Are you? Hear, hear. On the matter of sitting till midnight, if the matter is brought forward for a unanimous consent on whether we will sit to midnight, the Liberal Party will say yes, but I doubt that they will, Mr. Speaker. The government house leader is seeking unanimous consent to meet past six o'clock to as late as midnight if necessary. Do we have consent? I hear a no. It is only in special circumstances that government intervention should occur. This is one of those circumstances. In fact, during the time of this government, more than 97% of all negotiations have been successfully resolved without work stoppage. Legal strike position, and what we're doing here is creating a new system in Ontario. Speaker, could you have uh, asked for quiet? Can I please ask the members? to have some respect for their colleagues in terms of their opportunity for questions and comments. Since we came to office, York University has received 52 percent increase in funding, Mr. Speaker, and the agreement that was on offer, Mr. Speaker, included income adjustments to the tune of about 4 percent a year. This is the poster child for universities that's going to go on throughout this province in the next few years, and they want to crush the rights of these people, TAs and people working in universities, the right to strike, the right to have the ability to negotiate, to have a decent living. Your mismanagement took them from being pawns of the university and the union to being pawns between the Liberals and the NDP. And for that shameful political posturing, the Minister of Training Colleges and Universities should resign. When can we expect your resignation? I'm very proud to be part of a government which has made post-secondary education one of the cornerstones of our mandate, having to clean up the mess that was left by that government when they were in power. This isn't about me and it's not about you, it's about them.
the Premier himself has said that he expected the NDP to oppose this bill, knowing that he should have introduced this legislation weeks ago. Because you've screwed up this thing so badly, the strike has now made international news, sending the message to all the world that the post-secondary education of Ontario is not a priority to this government. No wonder we're on the have-not list. Over the last five or six years, funding for York University has increased Mr. Speaker, by 52 percent. Where did the money go? Uh, we now have almost a $100 billion budget, and when they came into office, it was $68 billion. What's happening here is this is the first uh, university to go down the road. There's going to be many more after this in the same position. So what you're going to do is now we are going to create a system here that forces people in a collective bargaining system to go back to work. Under the legislation before the House, all outstanding issues that have not been resolved would be referred to binding arbitration. Every union in this province is going to be under attack for their right to strike, their ability to stand up for themselves. And ask, maybe they might want to ask, ask the CEOs of York University what they make. Maybe you might want to ask why they let 100 people go, and including professors last year. 100 people retired, not replaced, and they're replacing them with four years, fourth year students to do the work of a professor. We look at the 08 09 budget increase in that single budget. Our government increased expenditures for the university and colleges sector by $400 million. Wow. Mr. Speaker. Wow. It's now been over five years since you came to office, and we're still 10 out of 10, dead last in Canada, the laughing stock of our country when it comes to funding our universities. The Liberals like to talk about throwing a little money here for books, a little money there for travel, or some for new classrooms, but they need to get tuitions in line and get per student funding up because there's no point building new classrooms if you don't have the faculty and teachers to put in them. How dare he, part of a party that you slashed funding to universities, which cut student aid and allowed tuition you to balloon, that, how you? dare he stand here today and claim that he's talking on behalf of students? Students that have been held hostage the last 12 weeks, they want to know why you allowed that to happen, and they're here today because they want some answers. They want to know if you will compensate them for what this strike has cost them and why, as the Premier suggested, they should take on even more student debt because of your incompetence. Keep order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I say again, Madam Speaker, why is Premier McGuinty so afraid of the union unions? Is it because unions are behind working families? Is he concerned that those unions won't be there to support him in 2011? Premier. Speaker, um, uh, just for the record, uh, in fact, uh, my office uh, had a number of conversations uh, with York University, strongly encouraging them throughout this process that they return to the bargaining table. The message I want all bargaining units to hear is that the right to bargain should not be considered arbitrary. Was the member aware that they were four points away from a settlement? Would this member suggest that all collective agreements in this province be deemed a, an essential service so there be no more unions? Would this official opposition suggest that none of the students graduating from their courses will become future members of unions? Would he suggest that they give up their bargaining rights in the future? If that's the case, we're in a sorry state of affairs. This is the longest strike in Canada ever. This government has had 12 weeks to get back to work legislation passed, to negotiate with the House leaders of opposition parties, but you chose to do nothing. We think that the matter at hand here is to allow due process, the rule of uh, law as established in the province of Ontario, the collective bargaining process, to have all opportunities to resolve matters of labour dispute. And the Liberal government now, after 80 days of uh, no action, is trying to blame the NDP for blocking this back-to-work legislation. Not once did I hear the Premier or the Minister of Colleges, Universities and Training say in any public way that he wanted the administration of York University to get to the bargaining table and to use its best efforts to arrive at a collective agreement. We cannot compel the parties to come together uh, and to negotiate. Uh, we can only create those kinds of opportunities that we, and, and then ultimately we decided it was important oh, to send in our particular mediator. I'm also more than prepared to phone membership. the president of York University again and to encourage him to go back to the table and do everything he possibly can. But, Speaker, yeah. we will move ahead with this bill. I suspect that 
because of the procedural tactics that the government's using. God bless, I have no qualms about that. I enjoy procedural tactics. I suspect that this thing may wrap up, oh, give or take Thursday.